They say you're the one that gave back to me. People will not believe you. You are not oh. serious. See your makeup. Eh? How old are you? Your shoe. Am I? You are still dragging uh, makeup with me. Mommy, leave it for us now. Leave it for me. You are old. Ah. You met me doing this makeup. Come on, get out of this place. Mommy. You're not serious. Mommy. Mommy. Eh, you want something to say? Something I want to say. Okay, talk to me. Mommy. I should say yes. You say you tell me. I don't know what you want to say. I should say yes.
Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you may be hearing me from. This is Rosem. Thank you for staying with me today. And um, today I'm going to be sharing with us something very beautiful that will help you in life. And it is the word of God, the word of life. Hallelujah. You know, um, today I'm going to be sharing with us uh, the topic of the power of association the power of association who are those you associate yourself with those you associate yourself with has great impact in your life they can either impact you positively or negatively and that is why it's very important to move with the right people so you can you can always Still with people that will give you the right counsel in life and not to lead you astray. You know, um, you want the little playlet that uh, I played some few minutes ago. This was supposed to be a very good girl. A who doesn't joke with God because she was brought up that way. She was brought up that way. You know, she loves going to church, even with her mom, you know. And just because of a party she wanted to leave church and go to party just because of a friend you know because of the advice she also received for a friend and you saw the conversation of herself she cannot do that because she was wrongly influenced why because she she associated herself with the wrong people who doesn't have the same mindset with her that is the same church mindset with her so she feels now the party is more important than going to church. And look at when her mom was talking to her. She walked out on her mom. She spoke to her mom the way she has never done before. You know, her mom was wondering, where did you get this from? Who taught you this? Because she wasn't like this. Something has happened. Something has gone wrong. Something has gone wrong. Why? Because of the friend, the kind of friend she was keeping, the kind of thing she was sharing, association, people she always mingled with. You cannot, as a child of God, you cannot mingle with people who are not spiritually minded. They will influence you wrongly. You know, there's a saying that always if you cannot beat them, you join them. Now, today, I'm going to be showing us some scriptures, you know. Um, first of all, I want us to go to the book of first um, Let's open our Bible to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. I'm taking it from the King James Version. It says, Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Do not be deceived, for evil communication corrupts good manners. She wasn't like that before, but something changed. Why? Because she has been corrupted in her mind. Because of the evil counsel. Remember what our, what our, our friend told her. He said, don't worry. I, I'll tell you the way about it. How, to, how you can convince mom. And the only way she can convince her was to be rude to mom. And this is how, how this scripture was fulfilled in her life. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Even communication corrupts good manners. When you stay, stay with bad people, when you very see, you will be influenced. You cannot be a Christian and all your friends are unbelievers. All your friends are, you know, they don't really believe in, they don't believe in God. He said, don't be an equally yoke together with unbelievers. I said, for what has the right has to do with darkness? The only business you have is to convert them. 
If you are trying and you know you can't, you leave them and pray for them. So even communication corrupt good manners. So the power of association is 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 is, is very those you in, you mingle with, you associate yourself with is very important. Now, Abraham was a very perfect example, you know. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love this story so much. The book of Genesis. Let's open our Bible. I'm still taking from the uh, King James Version. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, we all know the story of Abraham. God called Abraham. God had covenant with Abraham. And now, this was Lot. Now, I'm reading from chapter 13. I'll take from verse 1. And Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot was with him, into the south. And Abraham was very rich. Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. And he went on his journey from the south, even to better, onto the place where he tent at his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Hai, unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first, and there Abraham called on the name of the Lord, and Lot also which went with Abraham at floors and heirs and, and tents, and the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. If you read each, the chapter before this, you will see that it was the association, the connection that Lot had with Abraham that makes him to prosper. Just in the grace of God upon Abraham was transferred to him and it caused him to prosper. He said they expanded why? Because Abraham, he said, I will bless you and your seed. Meaning that anyone that come in contact with you will be blessed. So, Lord, because it was only Abraham God called. He didn't call Lord. But Lord recognized that, ah, no, this man, I will go with him. And he prospered because he stayed with Abraham. Because he lived together, because he associated himself with Abraham. He associated himself with the blessing of God upon Abraham and he became a blessed man. Just imagine that Abraham was a cursed person. He would have been cursed also. He would have been cursed also. God blessed him because of Abraham. Now, is it because they, they, there was a, they had a great substance? Their substance was so great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdsmen of Abraham's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle, of Lot's cattle, and the Canaanites and the Perizzites dwelt then in the land. And Abraham said unto Lot, Let there be no strife. I want peace. We had to go. Because now, because of because they have Increase. They have you no. Know, their substance is now great. They've expanded. They wanted to be a strife between the not Abraham and Lot, but between the servants of Abraham and Lot. And Abraham recognized it and said, "No, we had to go." And Abraham said unto Lot, "Let there be no strife. I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my esmen and the esmen, for we be brethren." For we be bedroom. Praise the Lord. Pray, praise the Lord. You can take time and read the story for yourself. So, and it, this is what association does. That is why I said, it, when, when, whenever you, as power of association, whenever you mingle with the right people, when you associate yourself, whether good or bad, it has negative and positive impact in your life. And that is why you must be careful of those you associate yourself with. And I, I don't, I don't, another story, and another story is the story 
is the story of Jacob. The story of Jacob and Levi. Praise the Lord. The story of Jacob and Levi. We know the story. And uh, Jacob stayed with Levi. And, uh, and before you know it, Levi started doing well. You know? And he would say, okay, you will not serve me for nothing. What will I give you to reward you? And he liked Rachel. And according to tradition, Rachel was a junior sister to Lai. So he married. So he served seven years to Laban before he could marry Lai. After that, he served another seven years again for Rachel. And even after that, Laban didn't want him to go. Why? Because this man recognized that since the day this man stepped into my house, things has changed. He didn't want the man to go. He didn't want the man to go. Even the man wanted to go. He, uh, he was trying to play every trick not to, to keep him not to go. Not to go. Now, I want you can read from um, Genesis 30. You read from verse 1 or even 29, verse 1, and all that. Then you will understand the story better. Now, um, Genesis chapter 30. I'm reading verse 27. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thy eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for thy sake. Do you see? He said, I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me because of you. And this is the reason why Abraham, uh, Laban was trying to restrain Jacob from not leaving him. And that is power of association. Because Laban know and understand that ah, since this man came into this house, I've been affected positively. I have expanded. I have increased. So I want this blessing to go. I don't want this blessing to go. To, to just uh, die like that. And that is why I wanted to teach Jacob. So who are your friends? Who are those you listen to? Who are those that counsel you? Who are those that advise you? Whenever you have trouble in your heart, who are those you think of first? They are very important in your life. They are very important in your life. Because evil communication corrupt good manners. Praise the Lord. A another story in the Bible was a story of, um, in First Kings, the story of uh, uh, Solomon's son after the death of Solomon. You know, his son reigned in his stead. Which is King Rehoboam. Hallelujah. The Bible says he did fully. How? Now, he, he, the kingdom, he, he took over the kingdom of his father, which is Solomon, after Solomon passed, left with his fathers. Now, he started where, in the center, he wanted some advice on how he can do so that he can lead where. Praise the Lord. I want, I want us to read. I'm going to rush this quite much. It's quite much. And Reuben and Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel were come to Shechem to make him king. Remember, after the death of his father, and it came to pass when Jero Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it, for he was fled from the presence of King Solomon and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt, that they went and called him, and, Jeru and Jerubim and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam, saying, saying, Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now they were click, uh, complaining to him, please, this is what your father did to us. Please, we know that in your reign, you should deal kindly with us more than your dad. Please don't do to us what your father did to us. It is a long story. Now I will, I will jump and read to verse 5. I will read verse 5. And he said unto them, Okay, I'll, I'll continue from verse 4. Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore, make thou the grievous service of thy father and his heavy yoke, which he put on, upon us lighter and we will serve thee. And he said unto them, The path. The part now the people came and complained to him. He told the people, Okay, I have had all that you said. Okay, go to your homes. The part 
Yet for three days, don't worry. After three days, I'll come back to tell you what I have for you people. Don't worry, I've had all your complaints. You know, he sent them away. He said for three days they should be then come again to me and the people departed. Verses and King Rehoboam consulted with the old men, the elders who have stayed with King Solomon, who knows elders, no men of wisdom. No, he consulted them. It was a good step that he took in the first place. He consulted them. He consulted them. He said with the old men that stood before Solomon his father, why he yet lived, why he was alive, why he was in the throne, and said, how do you advise that I may answer these people? Remember, these people came to him and said, ah, your father has placed a lot of you. Please relieve it from us. We take it from us and it's okay now because he didn't know what to do he feels that with the advice counsel of the old man who has been with the king can help him he went to and now he's telling the others now please can you help me can you advise me what should i tell them when they come back in the next three days what should i tell them what should i tell them and they speak unto him saying Look at what the old men said to him. And they spoke unto him, saying, If thou would be a servant unto his people this day, unto these people this day, and would serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servant forever. They will obey you. They will take you as their king, if you will hearken to what they have said. But if forsook, verse 8, if forsook the counsel of the old men, why something happened? Power of association. But if also the counsel of the old men which they had given him and consulted with the young men, the young men that were grown up, they are my friend, I am my childhood friend. They grew up together. I think they know me better. These elderly people that will soon go to grave don't know anything. That was what happened to that sister. Because the friend visited her. And advise her, counsel her wrongly. And she became, she, she was turned into another person. Different from what she used to be. And this is what it because And the only way she wants to go to the party, because this person was an, like angel to her. She was his her friend and all that. And this is what is happening to this king. He said, he consulted with the young men that were grew up together grew up with him and we stood before him and he said unto them what counsel give ye that we may answer these people he asked from the old man and he went to his friend again to ask now who have spoken to me saying make thy yoke which thy father did put upon us lighter and this is what the young man the advice they gave him and the young men that were grown up with him speak unto him, saying, Thou shalt thou speak unto these people that that speak unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but made thou it lighter unto us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's lungs. Do you see it? Now he wants to double their punishment. Now the people are saying. The yoke that your father has put on us, please take it, make it light. Now he said, see, even my little finger, eh, it will be more heavier than my father's one. Why? Because the counsel, the counsel that the friends have given him. Because the friends gave him the wrong counsel. He neglected, forsook the counsel of the elderly. But did that happen? No. It cost him. Because if you, Bible says he did fully, he did fully by heeding to the counsel of the younger one, of the young, his friends. So, I don't know who are your friends. I don't know those you take as your best friend. My people you choose as your friend. People you associate with. And look at what Sister uh, Joy said. Uh, I've been in school. Am I not a big girl? No. 
No, for the fact that you are big doesn't mean because you are not a big girl, you, you choose any friend, any half friend you want. No. There is power in association. It's very important. Because even communication corrupts good manners. There is power in association. Those you mingle with either mend you or destroy you. If you are in that case, I want to advise you, choose your friend. Don't let them choose you. When you are led by the Spirit of God, it will teach you, will guide you, it will choose, it will help you to, it, 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 it will show you the right people. For anybody that will not, see, let me tell you, as a unbeliever, do you know they don't pretend? Unbeliever tells you this is who they have. But is a Christian that will be living the life of unbeliever? No, because if you are, if someone is unbeliever, like the person likes partying and all that, this is she will never pretend about it. You can the only thing you just want this is me. If you cannot take no, why can't you just tell people this is you? You are a trust person. You love God. You want to serve God with your life. No, all my life, no matter what they say to you, let them say and all that. And because unbelievers don't believe. They don't behave like that. Don't compromise your service with God because of your friend. Because of anything. So mind those you associate yourself with. So thank you very much for listening to me. I hope you were blessed. I hope you were blessed. So please take time and go through the scripture. It will help you. So make the right decision to choose your friend. And those you associate yourself with. Thank you. But if there's anything you must take from this video today, is that there is power in association and it can either build you, enlarge you, promote you, make you a better person, or destroy you. And also, don't forget, even communication corrupts good manners. Be watchful, don't be deceived. Don't let your mind be corrupted. Let God rule your heart. Thank you, everyone, for listening to me today. Um, until I come your way next time, God bless you. Please, don't forget to subscribe and like, share. God bless you. Thank you. Bye.